point. Hey now, good morning. Hey now, uh, hey now. I'm in the mood to hey sing. Now. Hey now. Hey now. You know who I really like? <laughs> I like, uh, I love Tim Mom, but I like Adam Barta. Oh, oh, yeah. Adam Barta is Tam Mom's writing partner in music. I love it, too. I yeah. mentioned this. The part of that song I love is him. I'm free. She's free to be <laughs> Patricia Marie, you see. <laughs> Come on, let's dance, guys. Everybody. I just got this out of my head. <laughs> Tam Mom, yeah, it was in my head all week. Me, oh, too. I, I want it out. Yes, <laughs> too fast. <laughs> what is this musical chairs? The music keeps stopping. I start dancing. I quickly sit down. I love her. JD, what's going on with you and uh, Rappaport? Ooh. Michael Rappaport, the actor. Well, I faced him this past week in uh, fancy football, and you know how he is whenever he likes to be very, you know, uh, he tries to get in the, in your head a little bit. Gary, you fuck, I got a secret weapon now. I want to take this fucking Jason Kaplan, okay? I want to zip tie him, I want to fuck him, and then I want to cook him. Wake up, motherfucker! Wake up, Will Murray! Hit him with the high! I'm going to ruin him. And I'm going to fuck his face. No, yes. No. <laughs> what do you mean you're going to fuck his face? I'm saying, like, I'm going to fuck his face during fantasy Howard. football. Oh, so then he started calling you at home, or yeah. was he calling you here? Yeah, he was calling my cell, and uh, he left me a bunch of voicemails, because uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it up. Does it bother you that he calls? No, because I know what he's trying to do. Yeah, he's he's, he's like, I'm going to fuck you in the ass. You know, he gets crazy. I try and say stuff back to him, and then he gets all weirded out. What do you mean? Like, uh, he'll say something like, are you ready to be fucked or whatever? And I go, yeah, yeah, bend me over or something like that. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. He doesn't want his proposal accepted. Exactly. Yeah, he wants you to be grossed out. <laughs> Let me hear this. J.D., this is Michael Rappaport. It's Sunday morning. You know what that means, right? It's time for fucking. I've been fucking every single person in this league. I lap fucked. Big fat Jason Kaplan. I beat him so bad I ran around the track and fucked him from behind. Mm. Kept going. That's wow. called lap fucking. Well, he's JD. really into fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> then he gets annoyed with the JD that he hasn't called him back. He starts yelling at him. JD takes just dick. Have you cut your fucking hair yet? Call me the fuck back. You're not that fucking important. Have you ever thought about getting an astringent? You know what I mean? Like for oily skin, you fuck. And he goes up, man, he, he spends whole Sunday doing Why that. would you call him back? <laughs> call me back <laughs> so I can give you skincare tips, like astringent. <laughs> whiz. He's crazy. So I can demean you. Are you kind of honored in a way, J.D., when you think about like kind of that this is <laughs> like a guy who's been in major films is calling you and wants to fuck you in your ass? Yeah, I mean, I watched this guy, like I went to the movie theater to see Higher Learning, and he was great there in it. There he and, was, yeah. And now, and now I have him, you know, annoying me uh, every Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> It was the man show, and, you know, I would go through and make edit notes on all the tapes. So right. I'd get all the bits. And there was one bit they shot, I think it was like household hints with adult film stars. And they <laughs> shot with, like, Janet Jameson or something like that. Right. And I get this long reel, and it's very sexual. And I don't know, I'm probably in my late 20s at the time. I'm pretty sexed up. And I start watching it. And at that time, my imagination still worked. I was still able to masturbate with my eyes closed. So yeah. I start watching this and I start masturbating. I'm in my office. <laughs> so my you're masturbating to yourself. No, 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 no. I wasn't in this bit. It was right. like a separate oh, thing. Right. I wasn't actually there. So um, I'm masturbating in my office. I And then I close my eyes. And the next thing I hear is my ex-wife Gina's voice going, are you masturbating <laughs> to Adam? And I open my eyes and the next <laughs> chunk... 
is Adam Carolla at the hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> she caught you masturbating to Adam Carolla. To Adam Carolla. Wow. wow. <laughs> do you exp- do you bother even explaining to her that look? I was yes. mas- because it's even worse. No, I was masturbating to the beautiful women on the screen. I tried to yeah. do that, but she was too busy running to go call all her friends to let them know that I she'd caught me masturbating to Adam. <laughs> oh God. Do you see the humor in it at that time? Or are you like, oh my God? Yes, I... no, it was it was immediately funny. Fred might know this. Is Jethro Tull in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't, I don't think, think so. Are. That's ridiculous. Aqualung the album. One of the greatest albums ever written. We just did a quick search. We found out they've never even been nominated. Wow. Fuck these guys. Yeah, they've been eligible since 93. <laughs> Like, this guy made the flute cool. I mean, just getting laid with a flute is worth getting into the (laughs) Hall of Fame. You know? Like, if I was inducting, I'd be like, this fucking guy, he got laid with a flute. (laughs) Well, do you know, they're kind of disrespected. Uh, In 1989, they won a Grammy. Yeah. But the record company decided not to even fly them over. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> why? You know, they just assumed they wouldn't win. Probably because he had a flute. No, you know why? Why? Because they, they, they were nominated for Best Hard Rock. It was the first year they did it for uh, Best Heavy Metal. Oh, who are you, Casey Kasem? And? Yeah, so what? So they, they won they, Heavy they Metal. They should have flown them over. Of course they, they should have. Don't listen to him. <laughs> I love how they even start out with like a piano thing. You think you're listening to some concerto? You think you're at the Simona Dinnerstein uh, concert? <laughs> and then all of a sudden... Ooh, it's Buck. Here we go. Right here. WNBC. Oh, my God. That's so amazing. Yes. Well, let me tell you who is nominated this yeah, let's year. Let's hear. Radiohead. Ah, creep. I relate to this song. <laughs> <laughs> I got a perfect body, yeah. I got a perfect soul. Def Leppard? Oh, Def Leppard. I love that the one-armed drummer went on. He came back. Yeah, awesome. Just shows you, you don't need two hands for uh, drumming. I always said Overrated two hands. Overrated. (laughs) That guy's awesome. I saw him in concert. Do it. Stevie Nicks, Edge of Seventeen. Oh, now you're talking. This is a woman who deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, as a solo as act. A, absolutely. Just for this song. Great songwriter. Madly in love with Joe Walsh. Was she? Yeah. Shows you she's wild. <laughs> Just like the white wing dove. In, 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 in. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, Rage baby. against the machine. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is good. Now you talk. Coming at you, WNBC. You've got a beautiful picture back we're getting away. <laughs> and uh, make sure you got your WNBC bumper sticker over here. We got never little... got to play anything. No, like fuck that. We would have been fired immediately. <laughs> I would vote for them. A5 Devo? I dig the outfit and the attitude, but I don't know. Before Jethro <laughs> Tull, Devo? They got to uh, watch D- Devo be inducted? Uh, uh, poor Ian Anderson. He's, <laughs> he's sitting and fishing in England somewhere. He's got a sheep under his arm. Now whip it. Whip it, whip it good. Shape it up. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Craft work? Oh. <laughs> Who did Bom 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 at the Autobahn? That's them. Oh, my God. These motherfuckers. <laughs> this is Hitler's favorite band. I think. <laughs> craft work. Yeah. Und, und, und craft work. These guys are out there, man. Remember the album cover? Like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Trans, Europe, Express. All right. Enough with this. It's so no- it's such nonsense. Yeah, that's what Jethro Tull thinks. I can't even imagine what JD's like with his wife. You They're know? pretty good together. I mean, oh, yeah. Does he talk? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she like, what the fuck is he saying? 
No. No? No, they really, Howard, they really love each other. Yeah, I don't know. JD and his wife are definitely the most touchy-feely of our Really? Group. It's still that way. Oh, yeah. Ah. Wouldn't you say that, Ronnie? Yeah. 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 All right, where, where, give me more, your more, more, more on her end than his end. I was really? going to say, is he reaching so, yeah. over and grabbing No, it's more her. Uh, he I does love it that. a little bit, too. Yeah, too. Yeah, but no more, kidding. it's more her. Like oh. she's rubbing his head and, like, touching his titty? Yeah, I should put his arm around her. Holding hands at the table. Yeah. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, she has to lead him in. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, JD. Get, take my hand. <laughs> wow. I, I didn't know she was so physical with him. Uh, you must like that, JD. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that. Uh, give me your teeth. It's very nice. Howard, she's also very physically fit, and I'm almost yeah. sure she could take him. Really? Yeah. You think she, you, that'd oh, be great. I've seen her in the gym with like lifting big weights. Really? She could totally, I think she could take JD. She's going to just down him. Like, yeah. In a wrestling match, he's going down. I mean, she I runs. Does she have a really good body? She's in great shape. And yeah. she, she runs a lot. She, she has a running, than, she has a running body. Yeah, she does. You know yeah. those running bodies. A legs. running yeah. body. Yeah. 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 They squirt real far. <laughs> they squirt far, you right? Know. <laughs> it's a they running sweat body. and squirt. <laughs> yeah. Well, JD lost an arm wrestling match to Robin. I know. Look at this. Oh, Robin's going to take his <laughs> ass out. Right now it's even. Put your, put your weight into it, Robin. Right? Wait, wait. Robin's going to take it. Wait, wait. JD's slipping. JD's slipping. He's using his body. And he's using his body. Use your body, Robin. Take his ass down. Robin wins. Robin wins. JD, do you think you could take your wife in a wrestling match? Uh, no. <laughs> The world's most famous pimp has died. Dennis Hoff, H-O-F, was 72. And most people knew him from either our show or the HBO documentary series Cat House. Yes. And Cat House, I suppose you would say it followed the lives of Dennis and the women at his brothel. His most famous brothel was called the Bunny Ranch. And he also owned six other legal brothels, which I didn't know either. But he died not at the Bunny Ranch, but at the Love Ranch South. Yeah, another brothel. We had Dennis on the show for the first time in 2000, and uh, the guy clearly loved his work. By the way, this is Dennis Hoff, who is the, are you the head of the Bunny Ranch? The Pimp Master General. Pimp Master. <laughs> no, Pimp Master. Oh, Pimp Master. Pimp Master. Yeah. He is very happy to announce that. Yeah, Larry Congratulations, Flint. Dennis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But she's what did you major in in college? Uh, business, actually. Business, and, smart. And he's a good businessman. Yeah. As you point out, Ron. <laughs> Six brothels. <laughs> that doesn't lie. By the way, I think one of the most gracious and memorable things he did in his lifetime in terms of the Stern show. He is the guy who helped one of our legends finally lose his virginity. And of course I'm referring to Eric, the actor. Yes. Eric lost his virginity at the bunny ranch. Loved it there. Dennis invited him out there, paid for a visit. A beautiful girl named Haley had sex with Eric, the actor. Eric was miserable about everything in his life, but I got to tell you in this clip, I don't think I ever heard Eric so upbeat. She gets me on the bed. I'm completely hard. She puts the condom on, continues to give me a blowjob and stuff. And then eventually, I think after one blowjob, we end up having sex for the first time. What do you mean after one blowjob? You completed, you, you blew your load into the rubber with the blowjob? Yeah, it All took right. a while, though. Now that's make a wish. Make a sick wish, I guess. Yeah, I Eric, you thank God for Dennis Hoff. And, I'll, and I got to say it. Eric was never going to have that. No. If you remember, he even set up a threesome for Eric on yes. the same trip. And Eric really wanted to make sure we knew about that. You spoke over me. You didn't even hear me. What? What'd you say? And add one. Oh, you had two. At the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, oh, uh, the other goodness. voice in there was the late Johnny Frado. Yes, they're both gone. They're both gone. Love both those guys. And, you know, I have certainly... Um, weird feelings about anybody who pimps for a living, but getting Eric laid, I mean, that was kind of gracious. And then he got uh, somebody else laid. Dennis had a connection to the woman. Uh, J.D. lost his virginity, too. If you remember, J.D. was a virgin until he was 26. J.D. And J.D., because of the show, he finally had sex with a girl he met on MySpace named Courtney. But how did Dennis have a connection to that? Dennis called into the show right afterward and said he dated her, too. Oh, you're kidding. No. Oh, it's Courtney's cool. Courtney and I have been friends for a while. She's a great lover. I, I think this guy needs to uh, get a better education so he can afford a chick like this because he's had some big-time booty now. What is, where is he going from here? Uh, is Dennis a former boyfriend of yours, Courtney? 
What, what does that mean? I mean, have you ever well, had sex with him? he says you're a great lover. How would he know? How does he know if you're a great lover? Right. I did sleep with Dennis. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. That boyfriend, we're friends. J.D., did you know that Dennis? <laughs> I've, never, you know what? I've never. That's, that's actually the first time I ever heard that. J.D., did you realize you and Dennis were Eskimo brothers? Uh, right. You know that term, right? Uh, Judge Kavanaugh taught me that term, Eskimo brothers. You heard the moment I, I heard it. It was weird, too, because Courtney was trying to be diplomatic at first, but eventually admitted that Dennis was a much better lover than J.D. Oh, no. Yeah, Isn't that right, J.D.? Oh, what are you going to do? Well, uh, Dennis, you did help a lot of people get laid, and I guess that's an important calling in life. Did you see Brent got like a joker? Oh, you got to see that what? thing. What? Yeah, it looks this fake. This is new? Yeah. He got his whole arm with the joker from Batman. Brent, get in here. Really? Yeah. He's got a plan like, for villains going up his arm. Oh, there's different... Uh-huh. Show Robin your joker. He has tattoo categories for his arms. Like, what? This is the, the villains? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, show me that. It's awful. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> A big giant blotch of a joker. Yeah, I can't even see what it is. You can't. You need glasses then. I mean, that's a, this is huge. It could be Jesus with all those robes. Yeah. I mean, you have Joker on your arm. Yeah, and I've got Bizarro on my upper arm. See it? No, oh, Bizarro yeah. <laughs> from You've from got Superman. The arms yeah, for it, you have Bizarro sure. Superman. Yeah, yeah. That's the right arm. What's the left arm represent? The left arm, Blackbeard's flag here. And the uh, the anarchy symbol underneath here. Oh my God, that's very satanic. And what does that represent for that arm? It's it's basically just you know, fuck the laws and fuck these people. I'm gonna do my own thing. <laughs> really? Yeah. Fuck the law. There's certain people in this country. Yeah. If you're rich enough or you're a politician or you're connect connected enough, the laws don't really apply to you. But aren't you Mr. Citizen's arrest? And yeah. He was gonna run for government. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but, that's on his other arm. But. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy and Molly, as you know, are America's sweethearts. Were you thrilled to see Ronnie um, yes. out in the hall? Jimmy's face around Ronnie makes me the happiest. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I said to Molly him. this morning as we were getting ready, I said, are you excited to see Ronnie? She goes, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> because I know yeah, how I know. it makes Jimmy, makes Jimmy so happy. I'm more excited to see JD, and I was very happy to see Robin. <laughs> you indicate oh. that, uh, that uh, I don't think this is a secret, that you and JD direct message each other every once yes, in a while. Yes, I love JD. Yeah, he's he's very, wonderful. He's better on texting than he is on uh, yeah. in person. He does have a terrible handshake. I don't know if you guys have ever... Ooh. It, it's like you can feel how many times he's jerked off when you oh. hold his hand. Right. Yeah. It's the only part of his body has any muscle. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, he's great. I love you, JD. What? Did he shake your hand? Last time. It was years ago. We'll see if he's improved his handshake. Yeah, yeah, I'll go right. do that now. Right. Thanks, Molly. It's been a joy. I'll give you a fist bump. All right, great. <laughs> I saw you this morning. You look way thin. Well, I was also detoxing this weekend. With Judith? Yes. <laughs> what goes on? Where do you do it? We were at Judith's house this weekend. We coffee enema <laughs> Oh. You coffee enema at our house? How do you coffee enema? Wow. You get an enema bag and put some coffee in it. So you shit oh, in Judith's toilet with your enema? Oh. You, no, I kept it you didn't in spray? a bag. You didn't get any, like, coffee? Like, did you have to no, clean the toilet and no, stuff? No, I, It was all very neat and clean. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> what do you, what, wait a second. So who makes the coffee? Uh, uh, Judith made the coffee. So she brewed coffee. Yeah. She, she prepared the coffee. And then you put it in an enema bag and shoot you it into your ass. You it into an enema bag. And you went into your room. Yeah. You got nude. And no, no, I don't get nude. Would you, you pull your to, pants down? You just have to have a bare bottom. And you stick a, a thing in your asshole. <laughs> no, you leave it out. Yes, of course you do. And how far in do you get this thing into your ass? Uh, a good seven, eight inches. Oh, wow. my God. Do you gel wow. on it? Do you yes, put, of oh course. Oh, my God. This is not right. <laughs> this is not right. Oh, my God, is this wrong? Any, you don't need yeah. seven or eight inches in your asshole. You could take seven or eight inches? <laughs> what was that weird thing going on between you and Ronnie yesterday, Gary? What happened? You got on the wrap-up show. We were talking about the dinner we went to, remember, with uh, J.D. and John and Ronnie. And I just said that I thought Ronnie was acting a little weird that night. It was almost like we were still on the air, and it was just kind of surprising to me because I was looking to talk to Ronnie, but I think he was being—he was—he was very wound up that night. Well, all I know is he was listening to that, and he was like, "I don't know what Gary's talking about." Ronnie was on fire in the car. He was like, "So he got riled up." 
because of what Gary said. Ronnie, what was it we learned yesterday that you made Gary uncomfortable? I didn't misunderstand anything. I heard uh, exactly what he said. What did he say? He said that I, I that I kind of made him uncomfortable, like he wasn't wanted there. I love your accent, by the there. way. There. Yeah. Whatever. I'm like just he saying. he wasn't wanted there. <laughs> when we were at the dinner, I, I felt strange with Ronnie. It didn't feel comfortable. In other words, he wasn't talking to you? No, I felt like he was kind of like, just kind of performing. Well, I apologized to him for making him uncomfortable. Wow. When he walked back from the wrap-up show, I said, I'm really sorry for making you uncomfortable. I know, but that was him busting my balls, right, which is right. fine. So you don't want to go out with him anymore? No, I do. Yeah. We're going to go out. And the only Are you going to go to his birthday party at the jazz club? It's not a birthday party. I didn't, it's, the, it's, it's a night at the jazz club. a birthday party. Yeah. The, the biggest problem for me is... It yeah, got moved you from, might drop dead. Don't have a birthday party. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're not kidding. <laughs> it got moved from a Friday to a Saturday night, and I uh, bought the tickets and didn't mention it to Mary, so I told her about it last night, and she just goes, Oh, I fucking hate jazz. Why don't you all just admit you fucking hate jazz and go somewhere fun? <laughs> Why are you torturing yourselves? I actually thought this was Brandano's idea. Well, and he's I said an idiot. Fine. I said Why fine. are you listening to him? I'm not listening to that me. That kid doesn't he know said, jack would you, shit. Would you like Lago. to go? And Lago. I said, okay. <laughs> Why are you putting yourself through that? Because of Steve. Steve, what kind of he's numbskull ideas? He's got to go someplace cool. Yeah. No, it's cool. No, it's going to be great. It's They're cool. going to play Charlie Mingus pork pie hat. It's going to be awesome. Some Chet you Baker. guys take orders from Steve Brandano? No, I'm not taking orders. I, I, do something fun. I'm not taking orders. He said, we're all going. Would you like to join us? Yeah. Let me set it up. Yeah. Hey, Steve, why would you why would you suggest the jazz club? Nobody really likes jazz. <laughs> not in this group. Anyway. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Why would you? Like, if, if I have one night free... I'm not going to go somewhere where I kind of don't like it. Uh, Ronnie and I hang a lot during the mornings while we're waiting for the guests. Ronnie and I spend a lot of time together nowadays. It was a weird day where I was listening to piano music in the green room, and Ronnie came in and was like, you like this stuff? And I was like, yeah, you like this stuff? And he was like, I've been to jazz clubs a couple times. How did you decide who should go to Ronnie's little party there? You left a lot of people out. I said, I would love to do this with you. I know your birthday's coming up. Right. I don't want to make this a thing about me. Well, you kind of did. But would you like to do this? And he said, yes. Yeah. Now, why did you leave people? A lot of people are feeling left out of this group. Well, sorry. What are you going to do? I know know one person who I think is uh, Richard. I think Richard, Richard feels insulted. Uh, yeah, Richard feels insulted. Yeah, I know that he Richard doesn't feel insulted. God, sure. I, would, I would blow you to be left out of that group. <laughs> you, you Richard left likes out jazz. <laughs> I went yeah, to my favorite. John, yeah. Gary, JD, who usually hang out with Ronnie, yeah. and said, I am perfectly happy to go with just Ronnie and I, mm. and we'll find a night to do it. If you guys would like to do this, You let really me enjoy know. hanging out with Ronnie for the yes, night? Yes, I do. Wow. And also... I said, and I would <laughs> love if we could keep this to at least going to it before it gets to on air, but that cat that is out of the bag. Happen, yeah. And now you will goof on us for what is just a cool, a fun night of going out. Steve the- Brandano. He wanted to say cool, and he I just I tried to it. shave his words. <laughs> Steve Brandano and Ronnie hanging out sounds like maybe the most horrible thing I've ever heard of. Why? I, it just sounds like a nightmare. It certainly doesn't miserable. sound cool, yeah. does it? <laughs> What a uh, cool hang. Gary, you ought to leave that group. They don't want you there anyway. <gasps> you don't fit in. <laughs> oh, Look yeah, at I, you. I'm kind of getting that. The Howard Stern Show. You see, I'm Mike Rappaport. I got the skills. I got the class. And when those guys lose, their butts all bruised. Or when I fuck them up in the ass.